Okay, let's have a look. Exercise 1E, composite functions. This is one that will take a while to understand. So I'm doing two sessions on this, and uh, hopefully we will understand. Um, because when it does come up in your uh, exam, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to do. Like those questions are meant to be easy to do. I think it came up last year for domain and range. It was a domain and range question. And you just had to really be vigilant with the, the conditions for it. Um, but other than that, it's not a hard topic once you get it. Yeah? Here we go. Composite functions. Let's go through. Now, think of it as a function within a function. I'm going to draw a diagram of how I think of it as well. But think of it as a function within a function. Okay? An example would be something like this. I did the color coding so you can see. This is an example of a function within a function. How so? What I've done here is I've separated into two functions here where you have, let's say maybe you had one on x. See, that's the one on something. And I have another function where I call it square root function. If I put them both together, meaning if I took g of x and I replaced it in x, that now gives me the result of 1 on root of x. We call this, if we did do that, we call that an f of g. Okay, so that means f of g, that little o there means f of g of x. What that really means is in your function f, you are now replacing, instead of a number like 3, f of 3 or f of 2, you now have f of g of x. Does that make sense? So I'll do a comparison here. So remember you've been doing things like, let's say f of x equals to x squared, and you've done questions where they say find f of 1. What that means, oh, whoops. What that means is you say 1, you're going to substitute where x is. And so this ends up being 1 squared. True? Yeah? Now instead of a number, you're now replacing f with g of x. So you're substituting g of x in. So you can see that I'm just putting g of x in. So that's what's happening there. And that's what you're doing here. See, instead of this is your f of x, instead of that x, I'm, instead of replacing it with a number 1, I'm now replacing it with root of x. And that gives me one root of x. That's why I'm calling it a function within a function. Okay, that's one way of thinking about it. Okay? Whereas if you wrote it the other way around, if you said g of f of x, see what that means is in your function for g, you're replacing all the x's with f of x. Okay, that's what that means. Okay, so g of f of x means that I'm going to take the f of x and I'm going to substitute that into the g. Okay, so what that means is I'm taking this, this is my f of x. I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it into the equation. So what does that look like? That would then look like this. It will be instead of root of x, it will be root of 1 on x. See the difference between the two? One is 1 of root of x. The other one was square root of 1 on x. This is called... Oh, they end up being the same. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. Actually, no, no. Oh, wait. No, they don't. Actually, wait. Let me just clarify that. Do they? There is a, there's a subtle difference. It, it's only the same if you simplify it. And when you simplify it, you, you negate a few things. So let's have a look. I think it is actually the same. Let me just double check that. Because this is says you can't have negatives, and you can't have zero. This one can't have negatives, and it can't have zero. No, you're right. All right, it ends up being the same. So, so before you confirm that, what I just did just now was confirming whether that's possible, and that's your skill as well. What you have to do at the end of year is what I just did. Before you confirm by saying, oh yeah, root of 1, root of x, therefore it is the same. A classic example is some of my uni friends, um, I have some friends back in... 2016, because I, I used to go Taekwondo across uni, and so I did that for eight years there. And so kids who come in, I call them kids because they're much younger than I am. They come in, they're 18, and I might be 27. So that's why uh, they came in, and one of them asked me a maths question, which I haven't done uni maths for years. But they asked me a maths question, it was this one. They said, is this the same as this? What's the difference between the two functions? So if I got g of x, 
What's the difference? Yeah. Okay, so what they were doing, which they didn't understand, the, the lecturer at the time, you see, when you get to uni, they're, they're really fast. They don't take time to explain it for you. You're meant to pick it up yourself. But what you're doing here is when you do x squared divided by x, yes, it does equal to x. But the one thing, when you do that, when you do x squared divided by x, you've already just took away a condition. See, the condition here, without simplifying at all, you know that you can't have a denominator being 0. See, the here says you can't have x cannot equal to 0. But as soon as you simplify it, that has no conditions anymore. This one says, yeah, you can have 0. It's fine. They're two totally different types of graphs. Okay, they're two totally different, oh, in terms of sense, in terms of the domain. Okay, so here, yeah, that does simplify to be this. The difference between the two is one will have an open circle at 0 and one will include 0. That's, that's a y equals x line. And that's what I was doing here. I was just making sure that both conditions are the same and therefore they're the same graphs. Okay? So every time you simplify, uh, some of the questions last year, if you did some cosine and sine graphs, um, like equations to find out tan, these are the things you've got to be careful this year. Okay, so last year wasn't such a big emphasis. This year is a big emphasis. Before you simplify anything, you got to make sure that the conditions are all met for you to cancel it out or not. Okay, so this is different. That one would have a different domain than this one. Okay? But anyways, does that make sense when I say composite function, a function within a function so far? I'll do another one. I'll do another example. So let's say I had, let's say, f of x was equal to x cubed, right? And let's say g of x was equal to e to the x, right? Then f of g, so f of g of x, means that whatever g is, I'm going to put it into f of x. So if this is my g of x, which is e to the x, I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace all the x's. So what this ends up being is, this is my f of x, I'm going to replace all the x's with e to the x. So this ends up being e to the x, see I'm replacing that x there, and it's cubed. Cubed. This is f of g of x. Whereas if I do it the other way around, if I say g of f of x, this means in my function g, I'm going to replace all the x's with a function of f of x. So here, this is my g of x, that's e to the x. I'm going to replace all the x's with f of x, and f of x is x cubed. So what does this end up being? This will now be e to the, instead of x, I'm replacing it with f of x. So that becomes x cubed. See the difference between the two? Yeah, so this is a function within a function. Function within a function. So it's an exponential within a cubic. This is a cubic within an exponential. That's what I'm saying there. Does that make sense so far? That's the first step. And that's the first part of your exercise, question one. They'll get you to do this first. Okay, so learning how to read f of g and g of f. Cool? All right, I'm just going to, I'm mindful of the time. No, I've got time. Fantastic. 15 minutes. Excellent. Okay, so that's the first step. Second step is some of it will work, some of it will not. That's why where it gets tricky. When doesn't it work? And this is why, oh, wait, actually, I'll just go through the other notes so that you can see what I mean. Uh, f of g, f of g, okay, we read that, okay. Uh, no, actually, I'll, yeah, I'll do this part. When doesn't it work? I want you to visualize this for yourself, okay? Um, you know how I drew the boxes for a machine? When does it work and when doesn't it work? This is the logic on how I understand it, okay? Let's say this is f of x, and this is, whoops, g of x. Okay? When you say you've got g of f of x, sorry, g of f of x, and let's say f of x was equal to, let's make it up, let's do, uh, let's do log, actually not do log, it might confuse you, let's do, yeah, let's go back to the e, e to the 2x, and let's say g of x is uh, root of x. Okay? So that's root. Yeah, something happened to my pen. I don't know what happened. It's got this a bit. That's all right. Cool. So that's root of x there. Now g of f of x means that I'm going to substitute f of x into g. Okay? So f of x is within g. 
So what does that look like? If this is my f of x, I'm going to substitute it into g of x, which is root x there. So it will be root instead of x, it is now root of e to the 2x. What I want you to visualize as the machines, okay, is for every x value that you put in, this is your domain, for every x value you put in, remember when we talked about domain and, I mean not domain, function and relation, we only had one machine, yeah? When I put an x in, I'm going to get a y value, true? But the y value is technically f of x, agree? Okay, because I put it, if I put in 1, then it's f of 1. If I put in 2, then it's f of 2. Agreed? Okay, so it's whatever f of x is. So here, instead of y, I'm going to call that f of x. But then whatever f of x is, you're going to put it into g of x. Okay? Now the problem is here, this is the only part you have to make sure works. So the whole entire chapter, or exercise, sorry, 1e, is about this concept here. From here to here, does it work or doesn't it? Now here's the thing, if g of x is root of x, so if g of x is the root x function, what can't this take? Negative numbers. So the problem is, what if, what happens if I chuck in a number that ends up being a negative? That's a problem. This will be undefined, true? Okay, now let's think about it. e to the 2x, does that have any negative numbers? Can I get any negative numbers? Let's think about it. What does an e to the 2x look like? What's the graph look like? Well, I'll make it easier. Let's just call it... Yeah, I'll, just, I'll change it to x just to make it easy. e to the x is an exponential graph. This is what it looks like. Does it have any negative numbers? And this is where the confusion is. It has negative x values, yes. But it doesn't have any negative y values. If you remember, we're talking about y value. That's where the confusion is. You are looking for negative y values because you put in any x value. It doesn't matter what x value you choose now. So you can choose negative 1. Clearly, whoops, clearly that is a positive y value. So when it spits out a positive y value, it's okay. The g of x says, I will take all positive numbers. It's okay. Give it all to me. And this guy here is like, I'll choose any x values. I choose whatever, but as long as whatever spits out, this fits this condition. Yes? G of x should be root of x. I'll just fix that again. G of x, oh my god. There's something about this pen at the top here. Oh, there we go. Woo! Okay, so g of x. So that's what this whole exercise, which I'll explain again in the next session, and that's the only one condition you have to remember or understand logically about composite functions. There's an actual rule for it in your textbook, which I'll talk about later, and I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to understand it like this. Because when I switch it around, if I call it f of g or g of f, you have to understand that the conditions change. Okay? So here, what we're really looking at is the y values of the first function has to fit into the domain of the second function. That's what you're really saying there. That's why it's confusing. Range of the first fit into the domain of the second. That's what we're trying to say. Okay, range of the first fit into the domain of the second. And in this particular case, the notation that you're meant to write is the range of f needs to fit, or work means subset, means to fit into the domain of g. Now I'm going to rub that off because I don't want you to memorize this, because this only works because we're doing g of f. If I did it the other way around, if I did f of g, then it'll be range of g needs to fit the domain of f. And it's a bit, it takes a bit of time to sink in, yeah? But that's what I want you to understand so far. I just want you to understand what you're trying to do. You put in an x value, it spits out a y. We all understand that. But that y, you're going to take that y value, you're going to substitute it into the second machine. You have to make sure that that number, whatever you're putting in, has to make sense. Because if it doesn't, you can't get a number. Therefore, the function doesn't exist. And that's the hardest part. You're going to have to learn to restrict the domain so that you only get the condition you want. But let me give you an example. If I change this e to the x, if I change that function now, let's say I gave you, let's say I gave you uh, a cubic function. Okay? <coughs> if I change that to a cubic function, it looks like this. Okay? Remember, your goal is to look at all the y values, not the x. Okay? What's the problem here? 
where do I have an issue? Give me an example where I choose an x value and I put it into the machine, spits out a y value that is a problem for the second one. Give me an x value that will make that problem. <coughs> negative 1. You see, if I chose negative 1, let's have a look. If I put negative 1 into the machine, now f of x, I change it to an x cubed. This will be negative 1 cubed. What's negative 1 cubed? Negative 1. See, when I take negative 1, now that spits out negative 1. If I sub negative 1 into this, I can't do it. I can't do the square root of negative 1. And that makes sense. You see, if we look at the graph right now, at negative 1, I have a negative y value. But we already said this cannot take any negative numbers. That's why the range, that's why we said before the range of your first function, the range of the first function has to fit the domain of the second function. See, the domain for this one was all positive values, including 0. That range there is not all positive values. The range of this graph is actually negative infinity to positive infinity. See that? If I asked you for the, uh, the domain and range for this one, you'd say the range is r and domain is r. So how do you fix this problem? That's what the exercise is about, and that's what I'm going to get to, to do some examples in the next lesson. Is your goal is like, all right, well, how do you ensure then that it's only going to be positive y values and onwards? Where would the domain have to be? 0 to infinity. And that's it. What you just did with me is the skill I want you to learn. So it's going to take a while to sync. But that's all you got to do. It takes some time. See, logically, this is what you want. You know, wait, let me just try to highlight this for you. Wait, where is it? Oh, whoops. All right, here we go. I'm going to highlight this here. That's the domain you want. See, this domain will give you all the y values that you want. This is all the y values. See, all of that right there has all positive y values. Anywhere x that is negative, the y values are now negative. That's not what you want. So you want all the positive y values, so if I just restrict the domain here, if I just said, all right, it's all good, it will be good if you just make sure the, the x values that you choose is 0 to infinity. So now you can choose any number you want. So I can choose 1. I put 1 into the machine, 1 cube is 1, rid of 1, all good. If I chose 2, I put 2 into the machine, 2 cube is 8, 8 put into the machine, rid of 8, it works. You see, the thing that you're learning here is restriction. Restriction of a domain so that it works. And when I say work, I'm saying this. I want the range of f to work, but the only way to change the range of f is if you change the domain. And that's why it gets confusing, because we're using domain, range, domain, range, domain, f, domain, g. That's why I don't want you to memorize any of these. If you just understand there's two pieces of machine, and to fit in the second, and it makes sense from what I'm saying right now, watch this video again, try to get your head around it, and hopefully, it all sinks in. Yeah, but I'm going to do more examples in the next session and we'll conclude for today. Oh, I got a missed call. Oops. That's all right. Uh, what's the time? Yeah, I've got about five minutes left. So I'm going to leave it there. Just want you, want you to think about what I just said there, yeah? Because the condition that you get in your exercise book is this and I don't want you to memorize that, okay? Because depending on the functions it might change, try to understand what I'm saying. Two functions, first one needs to fit the second. You get that sort of around your head, questions will be a bit easier, okay? Yep. The y value that comes out has to work the x value Absolutely. Literally. What you just said is exactly what that means. Exactly what that means. The, the y value, which is in range, has to work for the x of the second. And that's the domain. Yep. Absolutely. Fantastic, guys. I'll be uploading this video so you can watch it again.